and from com community members directly about their experience with SAP products and skills. There are also some really awesome Channel One meetups going on, which are Zoom calls where as attendees, we have the opportunity to dial in and connect with other attendees, getting to know them and the SAP community team. So I hope you keep having a tech ed experience that's full of learning, great contacts, and also some fun along the way. Nice to meet you all, take care. Okay, it's perfect to be back. We had a little bit of break. I hope you also got a little bit of rest, Orla. I did, I tried, but I was very excited after our evening session, so it took a little while to fall asleep. But no, I'm rested and ready to go again. Yeah, you need to calm down a little bit <laughs> and then get going going again. So for this hour, there's a special, and it's a secret special, but it's no longer secret because I give it away. Jürgen Müller will be on the chat. So if you're watching us on channel one live, um, if you have any questions around the upcoming topic or any other technology topics, the CTO himself, Jürgen Müller, is on the chat. So jump over to the chat, ask some questions, ask uh, questions in details. Of course, also on to the experts for SAP HANA Cloud. So we're welcoming a lot of interaction here. And don't be afraid to give him difficult questions. He's well able to answer them. Exactly. And then also the developer advocates are doing their, their show and be active as well in there. Good. So I gave it already a little bit away. Or well, You know it. The hour is about SAP HANA Cloud. Uh, so we want to go deep into the technology on SAP HANA Cloud. And yeah, it's also amazing that SAP HANA is more than 10 years already in the market. I know, you're making me feel old, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, and like, I was wondering, because we chatted about it, um, what was kind of like your first interaction and, and experience with HANA? Yeah, no, I remember it really clearly. It was uh, obviously over 10 years ago. It was at TechEd in Madrid, I remember that, and there was a lot of talk about HANA and this new system, they were going to put BW on it, they were going to put CRM on it, but they also had the idea to kind of speed up your financial processing. Um, so I was actually an SAP customer at the time, and we were really struggling to get the month end close, uh, close quickly. And we had 22 countries that we were trying to close the, the books. So I mentioned it to my boss, and at the time he's like, oh, it's too new, too new, uh, it's too crazy. But then we were getting so much pressure from the business, we said, okay, let's give it a go. Let's actually put HANA front and center in the month end close. And we did, and uh, we, we shortened the close from seven working days to five working days. And the next year we came back to TechEd, we were actually talking about our project. So for me, it was super exciting because very rare in your career, you see really game-changing technology. And for me, that's what it was. But how about you? How did you first get started with HANA? I think for me, it was not game-changing, it was career-changing. Uh, because I, at that time, I was working in Palo Alto with a lot of the folks from the core HANA team. And uh, at one point, the question came up as like, oh, there's a lot of new skills needed. And how do we get these skills? How do we get these developers to pay attention to SAP about the databases and HANA especially, and what you can do with HANA? And so the, the idea was born, let's start developer relations. And we formed a small team initially. Uh, to really focus closely just on SAP HANA. Um, I remember still the systems we pulled up, like trial systems that was more than 10 years ago for HANA to get developers started, but then also learning content, developer advocacy. So we started a lot of these, these core practices around HANA to get us going there. So yeah, game changing, career changing. Yeah. And now it's in the cloud. <laughs> and now it's in the cloud. And I think it's like, yeah, it's definitely HANA has evolved a lot. Um, we, we see it from the SAP side. You see it in, in the applications um, as for um, like runs basically only on HANA. And, and I think there's a lot of like um, areas where now it, it really evolves out of it. So I know you are working in the 
analytics cloud predictors. Absolutely. We couldn't do the things that we do if we didn't have HANA under the hood, like all the, the smart insights, the smart discovery, all those predictive features. We need HANA under the hood to actually execute those machine learning capabilities. Mm -hmm. And there's definitely more, and we have later on a session on multi-model, um, so plenty of things more. Yes. So what is coming up this hour? Uh, it's again a very packed hour uh, with a lot of information. Uh, we will have an interview with an expert, and this will be Stefan Boyle. Uh, so he will go deeper into HANA Cloud and what is new, uh, what are the capabilities, etc. Then also we will have a custom interview. I always love to hear also from the customers. It will be NBA. Yeah, I, I have a fan <laughs> over here on, on the NBA side. And uh, definitely also want to show you SAP HANA Cloud in more detail with a demo. So there's, there's always good uh, to see what's new and in, in the functionality and what's coming. And also, and this is again a reminder, um, that we will have an expert Q&A. So if you have questions and Jürgen is not answering all of them, uh, we can queue them up later on for the experts. Uh, so we have the HANA team, the HANA product management team coming in to answer all of your questions. So there is a lot of information planned. There's a great hour in front of us. So I would say, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing as we have is the uh, expert interview and as HANA has evolved we definitely want to look into the strategy about HANA. And our expert just said it also before will be Stefan Beule. Stefan is Vice President and Head of Database and Technology Office at SAP and again if you have any questions uh, we will have um, a Q&A later on so please also go into the chat. So with that I would like to welcome Stefan to join us here in the kitchen in the ticket house to get you introduced and get started. Hi Stefan. Hey Thomas, hey Ola, nice to be here. Good, now it's perfect to have you here on stage remotely dialed in and uh, definitely from the questions, uh, there's, there's a few good questions we already worked on. And like the one I have first is SAP HANA Cloud, it's, it's the, the cloud part is only in the market for like a one and a half years. Um, but what do you see as the impact of the new cloud database uh, service? Yeah, that's a, a good first one, Thomas. And, uh... The past one and a half years have been incredibly successful in terms of journey for HANA Cloud, right? And uh, what's most importantly for our customers and partners that are actually using it, right? And uh, HANA Cloud is not the first cloud experience that we are having, but it's definitely the next chapter on the HANA journey that you already um, outlined so far, right? And it's built on the innovative and uh, award-winning technology um, that already thousands of customers are using today, right? And what was really awesome to see over the last uh, one and a half years is the speed of adoption for HANA Cloud, both inside and outside the SAP ecosystem, right? And also the wide range of use cases is really impressive, where customers and partners are building new applications, be them transactional or analytical, um, extend their on-premise applications into hybrid scenarios, use HANA Cloud Data Lake to store and process really large amounts of data, or even use HANA Cloud as a virtual gateway to connect all of their data in the organization. Yeah, and I think you touched already on to the use cases uh, in more detail. Um, so do you have any other use case examples for us to share? I mean, there's, uh, across the use cases, there, there's plenty of them. And we also see this in the way how partners and, and customers are adopting HANA Cloud and what they are using on that. And there's numerous customers um, that uh, are on it already, such as NHL, NBA, Accenture, Motor Oil, um, Otuji, High uh, Hitachi High Tech, and many, many more. And you already referred to uh, NBA earlier, right? And there will be an interview with uh, NBA uh, later here in this Channel One session, which will, I think, be very interesting to see how NBA is using HANA Cloud today, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and as we mentioned before, um, SAP HANA has been around for over a decade 
um, we and Thomas were just talking about our experiences with it. It's been hugely successful. But what would you say to customers who are looking to transition from on-premise to the cloud and even to customers who are looking at HANA Cloud for the very first time? Yeah, I mean, what we clearly see is that organizations in general face various challenges if it comes to you know data processing and data handling, right? The one is how to manage the, the, the large amount of data that is only getting bigger and is getting kind of created faster, right? The second is about how to handle data in heterogeneous landscapes that are well, pretty much siloed and fragmented these days, right? And in, that, uh, in these landscapes, how to turn the data that is there into real value, right? And value means not only over processing in, in a couple of months or weeks, but really instantaneously, right? And that's clearly where HANA Cloud has proven the value to our customers. Absolutely. And um, the other thing I also mentioned, whenever people talk about HANA, I, I've worked with HANA for many years, it's not just a database, it's, it's a platform. There's so much more going on there. So when I say to a lot of people about HANA in the cloud, one thing I say is it's not just database as a service, it's so much more than that. Maybe you can walk us through some of the capabilities that our customers can expect. Yeah, sure, Ola. Um, let me maybe kind of go in, uh, into a, a couple of them, right? Mm -hmm. On the one hand side, what customers can expect is a, a really scalable cloud um, service offering um, that is also providing a multi-temperature storage um, possibility going from in-memory to disk to data lake, right? And with a possibility to also tier data and use it and process it in the most price performant way. The second is it's integrated and hybrid ready. It means you can use it as a gateway to connect it to all of your data that you have with the strong data virtualization capabilities uh, in HANA Cloud that allows you and customers to connect data, not only to collect them and store them, and really process data across the many sources in the heterogeneous landscapes. And that is including also on-premise systems that are running on uh, SAP HANA today, like ECC or S4 HANA, right? And maybe the, the, uh, the last uh, point to mention here is that um, HANA Cloud is uh, provided in a multi-cloud environment, which means um, we are deploying, de deploying this on multiple hyperscalers and customers can choose their hyperscaler of preference, be that AWS, Azure, Google, Ali Cloud, um, across the numerous data centers there where we are providing and running HANA Cloud today. Perfect. So there's definitely obviously a lot of benefits uh, for HANA Cloud. It's, it's not just like the fully managed database as a service. Of course, it reduces all the overhead but maybe you can go a little bit deeper into the benefits, what you see, or also like more important, what our customers are seeing by getting out of the SAP HANA cloud. Yeah, sure, Thomas. I mean, as, as you say, right, I mean, it's a, a fully managed cloud service, which means we are taking care of the provisioning backups, applying software patches and updates, operating system updates, and all the, 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 the software maintenance behind the scenes. And also by applying cloud principles, um, there is um, means for um, cost effectively use HANA Cloud um, on, on that landscape. Um, for example, uh, as we are providing means for separating compute and storage, or as I just said earlier, um, go into the elasticity, elasticity and uh, scalability way. And specifically, uh, that one is also helping to reduce um, total cost of ownership um, by consuming only what you need when you need it and basically turn it off when you don't, right? And uh, of course, um, as you pointed out earlier, um, it's based on the solid foundation of HANA of the past decade of innovation um, on what we had with the, or still have with the, the HANA platform. Using the proven high performing in-memory technology, combining um, analytical and uh, transactional processing means and also having multi-model database capabilities. And you you're, you're referred to the, the, the multi-model um, abilities uh, also earlier. Ultimately, HANA Cloud supports our customers in meeting their most pressing challenges. And the best part is we support them no matter where they are on their cloud journey, right? And there is um, also work that we are doing and helping our customers in terms of help them move to HANA Cloud through migration programs and tools to really simplify the journey to the cloud at their own pace. 
Yeah, and I think this is important. I guess a lot of the customers are looking into the move to the cloud, getting the help, and and we also need to do our job, a good job, to help them along on their journey. Um, which brings yeah. me to to the next question. Of course, you guys are not done. I know that there's a lot of like brains, ideas, engineering going into SAP HANA Cloud. So. Um, Stefan, where do you see like the vision going and uh, where do we see HANA Cloud evolve over the next three years? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of things that are um, on the plate and that we are working on in terms of evolving HANA Cloud over the next uh, couple of years. And clearly there's a, a, a strong push uh, towards uh, uh, improving and, and accelerating the, the, um, the, the cloud deployments and functionalities. Um, also to make HANA Cloud the premier database as a service, um, also as the underlying foundation for the business technology platform, but also uh, for the SAP applications and solutions. But it's clearly not limited to this, right? So HANA Cloud is also serving um, the needs and um, scenarios of our customers and partners. And maybe to, to touch on three key areas that we are really investing and innovating in, um, to give you an idea of um, uh, what is on the plate. The first one is the, the, the topic area that we just talked about, which is uh, migration and adoption, right? By us uh, investing into means for having really a seamless pathway for our customers to migrate over to HANA Cloud, but also for our own SAP applications, right? Where in fact, numerous SAP applications already run and leverage HANA Cloud today, like Data Warehouse Cloud, PAPM, or the, the just recent announcement that uh, IBP is uh, going uh, on better um, running on HANA Cloud. We also have in that area um, many well, tools that we are providing. Uh, we just announced the self-service migration tool to migrate HANA as a service instances running in BTP Neo over to HANA Cloud, similar to the tooling that is already there for um, HANA as a service uh, in BTP uh, Cloud Foundry landscapes. And also we uh, just made an, a, a, a tool available, which is the SAP Advanced Secret Migration Tool. Um, available as a community edition um, that is helping to migrate solutions running on other databases and migrate them over to HANA and HANA Cloud. And last not least in that area, we just announced the HANA Cloud availability in the BTP free tier offering that makes it even more seamless and frictionless to start using it and move it from there over to the productive environment. A second area that we go into is the whole area of cost optimization and deployment flexibility. We're in the cost optimization area, we focus a lot on automation for both operations, but also for data management and tiering, right? Um, which is helping a lot on um, optimizing uh, cost and data placement. We are also investing in supporting latest chip technologies in close cooperation with our um, partners on the hyperscaler side. And that also links to the recent announcement that um, HANA Cloud is available on, uh, uh, on GCP and also expand on things like multi-availability zone deployments to cover um, high availability or disaster recovery scenarios. And um, talking about uh, the, the overall move um, and, and how to, to adopt, we are also introducing uh, in, in the fourth quarter uh, and dynamic extension capability for hybrid scenarios, which means you can connect your on-premise uh, systems of HANA to HANA Cloud in a high performance and seamless way, and thus simplify the journey over to HANA Cloud. A second area um, to touch on is uh, the area of scalability and elast elasticity, uh, which is obviously one of the cloud properties. And in that area, we just announced the um, scale out version of HANA Cloud that will be in uh, beta soon, and uh, is planned to be generally available later uh, next year. And also in that area, we are um, introducing uh, elastic compute nodes, which are actually leveraged by um, uh, our IVP solution um, to help optimize cost on the one side by providing uh, compute resources for peak workloads and remove them when they are not needed, which ultimately is resulting in, in uh, lower cost. So um, all in all, uh, we are already having a very strong platform today and we are making it even better for our customers on the cloud journey um, to see more, understand more, and do more with the data, resulting in instant possibilities to turn the data really into business outcomes and value. 
Absolutely excellent. That is, you guys must be super busy. <laughs> There's so much coming in the next while. So I've no doubt the team will be really, you know, really, really busy. So we did talk a little bit about yeah. MBA and we're going to hear their amazing story a little bit later. But are there any other customer stories that you might want to share with us? Oh, yeah, there are. Um, and the one probably to, um, to talk about is uh, the story with uh, Otuji, which is one of the biggest uh, food companies in Korea. And uh, Otuji required fast and accurate uh, forecasting to take informed decisions with sales, marketing, manufacturing, and their financial departments. And uh, they were facing a number of challenges related to manual processes and combining data. And um, specifically in that um, um, example, um, Otuji is using the demand forecasting functionality, which is a very powerful um, function, uh, part of the SAP HANA Cloud predictive analytic analysis library that is you know, combining the data, processing the forecast, and through that, Otuji is decreasing forecasting timeframes from monthly to weekly with faster results, less maintenance, and um, great accuracy. And these results have been achieved uh, by new landscapes um, using HANA Cloud, but also Analytics Cloud. And interestingly, this is a very common pattern that we see here, um, which is the combination of multiple data sources, be them on premise or elsewhere, um, and combine them into a single access layer. Uh, and in this very case, Batucci was combining a market research data from Nielsen point of sales data, but also large amounts of data in their um, BW for HANA systems on-prem. Um, and now all of that connects without the slow and uh, um, manual um, process of combining data uh, manually. And specifically as the food man uh, in the manufacturing industry is, is highly competitive, these insights into the data is a key differentiator. And through that, Otuji minimizes their business risk and also maximizes the, the, the profit opportunities. And uh, as, a, as an interesting quote, Otuchi's corporate strategy analysis team, analytics team lead said, their data is now more valuable than ever, which in, in total is obviously more relevant than ever, right? And thus, I think it's a great example to show how HANA Cloud can really help customers to create real business value out of the data that they are having. Perfect. Now, this was, was good like to close it out with a customer story that like yeah, the data is more valuable and, and that's great, great to hear. And I really loved when you went into the future of HANA Cloud, like you, you, I, we barely could stop you. So this was <laughs> great like to see there's so much on the roadmap and it's great to see the enthusiasm behind it. So with that, I would like to thank you, Stefan, for coming on to Channel One in Tech 2021. It was great to chat with you, and I think we are moving on to the next segment. Absolutely. Um, so that was amazing. Uh, it was great to great to speak to, to Stefan. So the next topic we're going to look into is um, a customer interview. And as Thomas alluded to, I'm a huge basketball fan, also a huge NBA fan. So uh, during the pandemic, I think like most people, I was glued to The Last Dance on Netflix. Absolutely the highlight for us on a, on a Friday night. Um, so my good colleague, Michaela Degbion, who's the Vice President of Database Product Management, had the opportunity to speak with Charles Rolfe and Patrick Wang. And they're going to talk to us a little bit about how they're using SAP HANA Cloud to give instant insights to MBA. NBA fans. So let's look at the video. Hello, everyone. I'm Michaela Dekbion from the SAP HANA product management team, and I want to welcome everybody to our session today. I'm pleased to be joined today by Charlie Rolfe and by Patrick Wang from the NBA. So before we start our conversation, may I ask Patrick and Charlie to introduce themselves? Thanks, Michaela. Sure. My name is Charlie Rolfe. I'm the Associate Vice President for Stats Technology and Product Development at the NBA. Pleasure to be here, Michaela. Uh, my name is Patrick Wang. I am the AVP of MBA Technology Data Services and Data Operations. Thanks, Charlie and Patrick, for having you here today. All right, so the NBA season has already been kicked off, and I'm sure all is well prepared to make it a very special one. So in that sense, the NBA provides the ultimate sports experience to fans worldwide. So what role does statistics play in enhancing the overall experience for NBA fans? Please walk us through a bit. Sure. The, the stats play a fundamental role for us. They, they make up the historical record books going back to the beginning of our league. And then they, they provide an important area for players to or fans to research their favorite players, learn about their favorite players, 
and ultimately engage and educate fans about the game that they love, basketball. And SAP HANA Cloud does a spectacular job allowing those fans to research and apply filters and slice and dice the data in a variety of ways so that they can get to the answer to the question that they're looking for uh, in very short order uh, across all of our products. Thank you very much for giving us that insight. And now I think for most of us, there's always a question about how does enabling instant insights for the NBA fans translate into IT requirements? And what were the challenges that you had faced with that? So please guide us through and let us know what was outstanding from your point of view, Patrick. Sure. Um, as a very uh, globally popular sport, um, NBA has always been having a requirement to deliver not only uh, real-time videos, but also real-time data, including specifically uh, statistics, right? So we are tasked with delivering that data, right? Regardless in XML format or database format um, in almost real time. And we have been using um, replication technologies from SAP. And also, um, since our fans are distributed globally, um, we need an infrastructure and services that are available and geographically redundant. At the same time, um, our fans are interested in all aspects of the game statistics, players, teams, advanced. So we need to build a service that allow our users to dynamically and query all aspects of the games um, and the players. So that's a uh, that's quite a challenge. Um, lastly, I would say that um, with the mobile and social media consumptions, um, our requirements um, for delivering the statistics have uh, evolved also over time. So that has been translating into um, many of the requirements that brought us to SAP HANA Cloud. Yeah, that's absolutely awesome. Can you also elaborate a little bit about what made SAP HANA Cloud a real slam dunk for the NBA? So every customer journey is different as we know. So tell us about the essentials of your journey to the cloud, Charlie. Sure, we, we'd had many years of successfully using SAP HANA in our on-prem environment, powering NBA.com stats and creating great experiences for our fans using that uh, SAP HANA as the backbone. But as our products evolved and moved towards the cloud, it became very logical for us to migrate and move to SAP HANA cloud. And it was a natural sort of extension and evolution of our use of HANA. And it has really created an opportunity for us to make use of the power of the cloud and, and be right in line with the rest of the new and exciting things that our digital products are doing that are cloud-based and cloud-native and take advantage of the cloud's uh, scalability and resiliency uh, and really continue to offer that best-in-class experience so that our fans can access the data and access the stats uh, in a way they're accustomed to and also uh, with, with a seamless transition, they, so they didn't even notice that the transition took place, but then allow us to iterate faster and, and develop product, new products faster because we're on the cloud. It's right in line with the rest of our infrastructure and power the rest of our next generation of products going forward. Sure, I totally agree with Charlie. And in addition, I think the slam dunk aspect of the SAP HANA cloud migration for us is that we were able to complete a migration with very minor changes and with the new capacity um, model that HANA Cloud provides us, uh, we are able to spin up more instances than when we were on-prem. And also we are now able to do rapid code development end-to-end -end, um, from the developer's code repository all the way to the production. and by using the Cloud Foundry. The scalability is also a big advantage now for us uh, because now we can size up and size down our instances anytime based on demand. And also, even though SAP HANA Cloud is public facing, um, the setup through the cockpit allows us to have maximum security control. For our fans that are watching, what are some of the lessons learned about SAP HANA Cloud that you want to share with us, Pat? 
walk us through a little bit. Sure, I I'll take this one uh, gladly. Um, I have to acknowledge the excellent help um, and team effort from SAP Consulting Team. Um, since the start of this project, um, we were actually um, shadowed by SAP um, team on a day-to-day -day basis, and they were very knowledgeable and they were helpful um, in every aspect of the development and setup and rollout cycle. Um, so this is the most impressive um, thing I would say. Charlie? Sure. The, the, the only thing I'll add is a, a credit to Patrick and, and his team's good work and a credit to SAP Consulting and, and fundamentally SAP on a cloud is the, the migration. The lesson learned was the migration really wasn't that scary. Uh, as the, the team building the products on top of the database foundation, you know, it was really transparent to us, whether we were working with our previous environment or the new cloud environment, everything worked seamlessly. The migration was, was painless and we were able to stand our products up on the new cloud infrastructure uh, in remarkably short time frame. Yeah, that that sounds absolutely exciting and like basketball. It is also exciting to look ahead, whether it's the next shot or it's the next game or the next innovation. And please tell us what is ahead for the MBA and for SAP HANA Cloud. Charlie. Sure. We're, we're always striving to make sure that there's enough data and stats available to our fans uh, to continue to engage and educate them. So for us, that means getting a lot more data into SAP HANA perhaps from our player tracking systems, the, you know, the future in terms of there'll be more and more data gathered on the games themselves. Uh, that is growing exponentially as we look at new products that generate things far beyond the box score uh, that you could ever imagine. And we're excited for the opportunity to bring that data into SAP HANA Cloud uh, so that it can be served up to all of our digital products uh, so that fans can interact with it and interact with it in a way that they've become accustomed to, right? With all the flexibility that they expect, the ability to filter it by, by game, by date, by player, by opponent. I believe we've we once calculated there's over a quadrillion different permutations of, of various filter sets, and fans can find exactly the answer they're looking for in very short order. Get a timely response from Hana. You know, apply, apply as many filters they want, and know that they will get an answer uh, in a reasonably short amount of time. Uh, even as we continue to add more and more data and the data set under the underlying data set grows exponentially from there, uh, where, you know, the cloud uh, SAP HANA cloud puts us in a great position uh, to handle that exponential growth in data so that we can continue to use it to serve all of our digital products uh, and ultimately serve our fans. Patrick, do you want to add on that? Sure. Very well said, Charlie. MBA is a growing um, media brand globally recognized and we are um, happy to have SAP as our digital partner for many years. And I believe um, the exciting part is well ahead of us. Um, what I would share is that um, as a bit growing business on the digital side, especially the company, the business needs a lot of um, inroad into the data insight, uh, specifically viewership, um, statistics, fan data, which all helps to drive our media strategy and also our product um, innovation. So um, along that um, vein, I believe that SAP HANA Cloud can help us to dive deeper into all aspects of our data, make correlations, and help our um, analysts and strategies, strategists to come up with more exciting features that are accessible by the fans. And, and, and I sincerely hope that we'll have more work to do down the road. Yeah, awesome. And Charles, Charlie, Patrick, thank you so much for that insightful conversation about your journey to SAP HANA Cloud. I hope it was useful for our audience and for everyone who is watching. And we are wishing you all the best, a good, a great and awesome season. And goodbye. Thank you. Wow, well, that sounds like an amazing experience for NBA fans. So, Thomas, we've moved to the living room. Yeah. Have you, have you seen the cat anywhere? I don't know. No. I, I'm always sneaking around behind <laughs> us.
<laughs> Very good. Well, we've heard about some great customer stories, but next up, what we're going to hear from is Tae Suk San, who is one of the HANA product managers. Um, what he's going to show us, uh, talk to us about, and also show us, is how we can offload our analytical workflow to the cloud. So he's going to go through that in some great detail. And then once we're done, we're going to be going straight into our expert Q&A. So do get your questions coming in. We have three amazing experts coming up. And with that, we'll go to the video. Hello, I'm Tesok Song from SAP HANA Product Management. Customers have already invested heavily with on-premise systems for running their business. The availability of such systems are crucial for daily operations and requires high availability and stability. But as the company is growing and the workforce is becoming more mobile, the system landscape needs to be agile to such changes. The bimodal hybrid approach, keeping the system of record on, safe on-prem while extending their workload to the cloud offers such agility to scale dynamically. We now offer a solution to offload the analytical workload with just a few simple clicks to replicate without any migration. For SAP, the analytical workloads consist of calculation views, base tables, and reference data such as currency or unit conversion tables. To offload the HANA Cloud, we replicate the entire analytical workload, then SAC can run analysis directly connected to the calculation view. And this can be replicated to multiple regions and scaled elastically based on demand. Let's look into the details of the on-prem system. Here, we're looking at the calculation views that are repository based. We are aware that a lot of customers are running the repository-based calc views, and we wanted to show how simple and easy it is to replicate them to the cloud. The sales order calc view consists of base sales order tables at the bottom and doing a star join of multiple dimensions of other calc views that are in reference. As the amounts are based on local currencies, we have a measure using currency conversion to aggregate on a common single currency such as Euro. To start the replication process, we will now go to the monitoring section of the SAP HANA Cloud Cockpit, and there's the connections to SAP HANA Cloud Card, and we can create a new replication from here. New connection can be created for SPS 05 or higher, or for earlier versions. The SPS 05 or higher is needed for the direct connection to the on-prem using the cloud connector to tunnel through the firewall. This is needed for the HANA optimized native replication. The system user is used at the time of this demo, but will allow privileged user once this feature becomes officially available. Next, we select the schema or user containing the data to be replicated, and we'll enter the initial password for the user as the original password cannot be extracted, and this creates the schema in the background. We will list the objects that can be replicated by filtering on table and calculation view. We select all reference table that are needed and select real time as the replication schedule. Finally, we'll select the calculation uh, sales order calc view as the real time and start the replication process. The system will retrieve the metadata of the calc view and all dependent objects, including other calc views and its dependent objects, so the entire workload can be recreated. As the replication is now finishing up, we will now look into the dependent object list and see all the CAC views, the hierarchies, the base tables that was replicated from the source system. And it's now all being recreated in HANA Cloud. Now to consume and analyze, we'll go to the SEC modeler and check a model that was previously created. The data source is using the sales order CAC view that we just replicated. SAC will pull all measures and dimensions info from this calc view definition. So to verify the model, we'll create a story and run a simple query by selecting a measure and dimension and see that the data is shown based on our selection. Now let's switch over to a dashboard using the sales order model. By selecting a product category, all the KPIs and the chart data are retrieved very quickly as the analytical workload is now all in cloud with reduced latency. Just to compare the performance, let's go to the performance statistics in SAC. 
we can see here the performance of, for the on-prem was around half a second, and the hybrid connection shows big improvement as it was reduced by half. Through this demo, we've seen how simple and easy it is to set up and extend to the cloud. The analysis is done on live data. With cloud-native capabilities, you expect to support elastically and scalability on demand. I hope you're all excited as I am of how simple it was to extend to the cloud. So please check it out for your future hybrid projects and thank you for listening. So this was really good and also like to see how you can move from on-prem to the cloud and also see like what the benefits are there. So next section, what we wanna dive into, we're getting a few experts into the room here to go deeper into the questions what you have asked on the, on the Q&A tool out there and to have a more in-depth discussion around S, uh, SAP HANA Cloud. So with me, I have the three experts. So it's Thomas Hammer. Uh, he's product manager uh, for HANA Cloud. Uh, then we have uh, Melanie Hendrik. Uh, she focuses more on the, on the encryption and key management. And then we also have Dominic Noth. Um, he looks into the cloud infrastructure and also into migration of cloud. So a lot of the topics we discussed earlier. So I would like to welcome them onto the house. Thomas, Melanie and Dominic, how are you guys doing? Are you there already? Perfect. Good. How are you doing? We're doing great. Great to be with you, Thomas. Perfect. Now, so first question I have actually for you, Thomas. Um, what makes HANA Cloud um, a cloud native uh, database as a service? That's a very good question. And um, I think actually that Stefan earlier touched on many of the, the aspects why we consider HANA Cloud as a, as a cloud native and also as a managed database as a service. Um, maybe first about the cloud native characters. Um, I think most important to mention is that HANA Cloud is based on truly cloud native technologies. So we're using, uh, of course, mechanisms like containerization, uh, virtualization and intelligent hardware and resource management um, to provide a database solution that can offer, let's say, the services as cost efficient as possible. And I think that's what Stefan explained earlier, and that's definitely the case with HANA Cloud. Um, but not just like uh, we benefit from, from these cloud native technologies in a sense that we can deliver cost efficient services, we can also deliver additional utilities, like for instance, advanced scalability, um, elasticity, um, and um, basically also resilience built into the service by default. So that's talking about what characterizes HANA Cloud as a cloud native database solution. And now what makes it a database as a service solution that's simply the way the service is being provided. So comparing it maybe with the HANA um, on-premise version, then the, the, the main difference is the way how the service is being delivered, how customers consume it, how they provision the service and also run it in the cloud. So it's it's managed in a sense that we, we um, as SAP take care of many of the activities a customer typically would need to run himself. Mm -hmm. Um, in sort of a package that really um, allows the customer to focus on the very important parts, which is then again, data storage and data processing and making an analysis on top of the data. Excellent, thanks Thomas. Uh, in the meantime, Casimir has joined us and is uh, playing with the mouse. Uh, he's obviously clearly interested in this topic. Uh, but moving mm -hmm. on, Melanie, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we know security is a really key concern for our customers. Um, what can you tell us a little bit about the difference between security for SAP HANA on-premise and SAP HANA in the cloud? Hi everybody. Sure, um, security is an important aspect if you talk about a cloud database and um, the main difference between the security with regard is between HANA Cloud on, uh, between HANA Cloud and on-premise is mainly in the distribution of administration and monitoring responsibilities. Um, in, when you talk about HANA on-premise, the customer is responsible basically for everything himself. He has to set up the system and he has to take care of all security-related administration and operating tasks. In the cloud, um, there's a um, distribution between the responsibilities between the customer and SAP. The customer is responsible mainly for the data access security. So he's responsible for setting up um, users and roles, authorization, auditing, maybe anonymization and data masking and all this kind of stuff. And 
um, SAP takes over the operation and the secure operation and the secure administration of the service. So, um, for instance, we have to take care of encryption of the data and also uh, for system auditing. So, in short, on-premise, the customer is responsible himself for everything, and in the cloud, the customer can concentrate on data access security, and we at SAP take care of the secure operation of the systems. Excellent. Thanks, Melanie. Um, so once customers do make the decision that they want to go to SAP HANA Cloud, Dominique, maybe you can take us through some of the migration options they may have? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Thanks for the question. Um, yeah, so for, for, for customers uh, running on um, yeah, running HANA service instances in the Cloud Foundry environment, we already have a self-service um, yeah, available running in the business technology platform, so where customers can start um, the, the migration process uh, process by their own, and uh, we are guide them through the process of uh, yeah, migrating from their HANA service instance, either AWS or Microsoft Azure, to HANA Cloud. For other customers, um, we have a database migration factory program in place. Um, this program supports customers on a project basis, uh, also on the, the, the journey to HANA Cloud, um, a bit more independently from where they are coming from. Um, of course, um, we will um, extend our self-service capabilities uh, also in the future to support even more um, source databases to, to yeah, as on a self-service basis to come to, to, run a, to HANA Cloud. And so this is really an important uh, topic for us. Perfect. Um, so there is a follow-up security question coming in from the, from the tool here. Um, what security protocols are used in SAP uh, HANA Cloud? How safe is it compared to other databases? I think that's maybe for Melanie to pick up. Yeah, well, we use, for instance, um, communication encryption for all communication and network commun uh, channels. Um, and for that, for instance, we use a TLS 102 uh, in HANA Cloud that is activated by default. You cannot deactivate the, the encryption features we use. Um, yeah, so th that is always on by default. Okay. And Maybe another one from the tool here. So um, SAP is embracing lots of open source um, at the moment, which brings a lot of excitement for our developers, but also poses a learning curve. Uh, what would you say to those developers and how, do the, how can they keep up with that? I don't know who wants to take that one. I can try to, to take that one. So um, definitely, our, well, like we have um, a, a big heart for the open source community and with SAP HANA Cloud, we also try to integrate as good into existing open source, for instance, tools and clients. So um, a very great example is, for instance, when we talk about the Beaver, um, we know that like there is a specific integration for SAP HANA and also SAP HANA Cloud into the Beaver, giving folks that are very like uh, in favor of using open source tools also the possibility to work with SAP HANA Cloud. Um, but there is also, when we specifically look into one very, um, let's say, sort of a niche topic, but definitely also very relevant for many customers, like in the spatial area, um, there is tools like QGIS that also support SAP on a cloud. So, and that just gives a perspective on like how we also try to engage with the open source community and provide them a channel to use HANA Cloud in their, let's say, um, different scenarios. So definitely from our side, we can also say that we um, like uh, are um, super eager to uh, en engage more with the open source community in future and give them the possibility also to, to um, let's say, keep up to speed with SAP on a cloud. While the tool itself is not open source, um, we definitely also have the free tier offering available. It was announced at TechEd yesterday during Jürgen's keynote, and I think it's more than important to, to um, repeating that, that now also developers can make use of HANA Cloud for free starting with um, an instance and, and getting their hands on the tool um, in various different combinations with other open source technologies as well. Perfect. Now I know that definitely was a big news and I think it's also from Mike Paula is a blog post out to, to go through the details. Um, yeah. One more question and this goes more into the, um, the hosting. Um, uh, if we if we can if we use HANA Cloud, uh, can we choose the hosting location like Americas, Asia, Pacific, 
What is the offering there? Yeah, maybe, maybe I can take this one. Um, yeah, our customers are absolutely free to choose uh, the hyperscale of their choice. Uh, I think uh, Stefan also mentioned that uh, in his interview. And uh, as well, they are free to, to, yeah, to, to choose the region, either US, Europe, Asia Pacific. So we are completely flexible with that. Um, for all our hyperscalers, we are available in all regions and our customers can uh, yeah, choose their own where they want to be located. Okay, great. Uh, and more questions coming in here. Um, questions about migration, maybe again, Dominique. Um, for people who are migrating from on-premise into the uh, to HANA Cloud, what is the, the differences they can expect in their overall total cost of ownership? Um, I think, yeah, that, uh, it's always a difficult question to, to really compare on-premise with the cloud in, in this, this terms. Um, but um, also, Stefan mentioned that, um, that with the, the usage of the cloud, you get rid of all the administrative tasks you have underneath with uh, all the, the, the yeah, hardware uh, administration of operation systems and so on. So you really can concentrate on uh, the business, business needs. And uh, with that, of course, you reduce also then uh, the, the TCO, uh, for, for instance. Okay. There's one also related might be might need to go to Dominic. It's about the migration tool. I think it was mentioned before. Um, so is there an update or is there a release, an, a release update coming is the question. Uh, yeah, we are, we are uh, as I said, we are constantly working and improving uh, our migration tooling. So we, we uh, just released uh, the, the possibility of uh, the HANA service in Azure to be migrated to HANA Cloud. This was uh, uh, recently announced or recently uh, released. And uh, we were also uh, working on um, the, the new environment. So that's the, the HANA service running in the SAP data center. So there we will uh, deliver a, a self service option uh, in the beginning of next year. So yeah, so we are, we are working on, on delivering more migration self service options in the future. Excellent. Migration is a very popular topic. So obviously the good news is people want to go to SAP HANA Cloud. But let's just stop for a minute for uh, some of our customers that are still using on-premise systems. And um, can they make use of SAP HANA Cloud with those on-premise systems? And maybe Thomas, you can jump into that one a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the demo just fits perfectly to, to the question. So the demo that we've seen earlier showed us how we can offload scenarios from one premises systems to HANA Cloud. And I think um, this is just one of the examples of how you can make use of HANA Cloud in combination with your on-premises systems. Because it's like um, absolutely true and we see that or we hear that from many customers that they want to safeguard their investments on premises, but still also want to make use of that very scalable and flexible technologies like we provide with SAP HANA Cloud. And um, as said, for instance, the replication service and, and the, the new possibilities also to replicate calculation views and, and entire analytical scenarios to HANA Cloud is just one example of how you can combine the tools and make use of it and also integrate it into your on-premises landscapes. Good. I think one more question. Um, uh, I think it's for Melanie. You mentioned um, that you manage the encryption keys, but is it also possible for customers to use their own? Yeah, that's a question we often get. Um, as mentioned, encryption is activated by default in HANA Cloud. So uh, all data address which is stored on the um, disks will get encrypted and you cannot deactivate it. And by default, SAP takes over the management of the encryption keys. So customers who do not want to manage them, they don't have to take care of them. But um, if customers want to manage their own keys, they can use an integration with SAP Data Custodian KMS. And with that integration, um, you can manage the keys, the encryption keys of HANA Cloud uh, within Data Custodian, um, which is also a solution we at SAP offer, a cloud solution. And that uh, solution offers different functionalities for uh, managing the keys. Uh, it, it provides functionality for customer controlled encryption keys, where customers can create and manage the encryption keys directly in Data Custodian. It supports a bring your own key functionality where customers can import their encryption keys from an already existing HSM solution they use. Or it also uh, provides a hold your own key functionality where we provide or colleagues from um, Data Custodian provide an integration with AWS Key Store 
um, to manage their keys directly uh, in that key store. And um, yeah, that integration is already available for the HANA database on HANA Cloud, and we are working on extending that, that also the encryption keys uh, for Data Lake can be managed within uh, Data Custodian. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Melanie, uh, Thomas, Dominique. Uh, we're still getting tons of questions on here, so I'm going to say to all the people who are so engaged, uh, go across to the community page. Um, we will still have experts there that will continue to ask the questions. Uh, migration is a key topic we're seeing, so obviously people want to move, which is fantastic. But again, thank you so much for joining us, taking the questions. It's been a great session. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, well, gosh, yeah, that was a lot. Um, but we're not over yet. There is still so much more content that we have on SAP HANA Cloud. Um, not just here on Channel One, we also have a session CH006, which is a great uh, chat with Irfan Khan, and he talks to us about how we can use data to power your digital transformation. We also have another session, uh, CH027, which will be me and Thomas again, I think we mentioned it, where we're really going to dive deep into multi-model. This is a great session, uh, you really should attend it. And uh, there's plenty more in the session catalogue, right Thomas? Yeah, so there's of course a whole list, so examine, for example, the cloud native features, uh, that's DAT 105. Uh, then there's another one very hot topic in the market and also with the developers, it's Data Lake, uh, the topic, uh, very interesting, that's DAT203. Um, then, yeah, we saw it from the questions, migrations, discover the new possibilities, that's DAT204. And last but not, not, not least, um, uh, there's also a short pitch for the developer keynote, which is coming up at 5 p.m. Central European time today. And of course, they will also have a lot of details around um, HANA, not, uh, not to forget about that one. Absolutely. And uh, Casimir is back again over your shoulder. He's really interested in these sessions, so he wants to see them too. And maybe just one final point to add. I think we, we touched upon it during the Q&A. Um, a brand new blog just published today from Mike Paola about how SAP HANA Cloud is in the free tier for BTP. So do definitely check that out. Uh, hot off the press uh, for you to see. Good, and I think this is already like the hour almost closing. So yeah, we, we are pacing through <laughs> here, but it's not completely done. So we also look at the technologies from the partners and from the ecosystem. And it's often like really interesting how the technologies are working together. VMware is one of our long-standing partners um, and we have Mark Terry, SAP Global Alliance Sales Manager from VMware, to walk us a little bit through how the technology from VMware works together with SAP. Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be speaking with an incredible group of leaders from VMware. Dominic Uliano, Director, SAP Global Alliance. Mark Terry, SAP Global Alliance Sales Manager. Eric Rieger, Principal, SAP Global Technical Alliance Manager and Architect. And Manuel Martoul, Director, ISV Partner Marketing. Eric, how does VMware work with its customers to ensure that their VMware environment is the best platform for their SAP workloads? Let me rephrase the question because uh, we work mainly with our SAP peers, which are the SAP certification validation team. Um, and with this team, we have very fixed and well-defined KPIs. These KPIs are um, for performance, for reliability, but also for operations. And with this, um, we ensure that we have the best platform available for ACP HANA. Mark, what are the three most critical customer requirements in VMware's SAP S4 HANA roadmap? The first requirement most important in VMware's S4 HANA roadmap is the support of ever larger HANA databases. This is huge because HANA databases are getting larger and larger and customers want to leverage the benefits of VMware across all their SAP systems and landscapes. We're continuously working to increase the maximum supported size of HANA, and we currently sit at a scale-up maximum of 12 terabyte and eight CPU sockets, which is truly a monster VM for S4 HANA. The second requirement most important to customers in our S4 HANA roadmap is the support of a wide range of Intel processor generations and Intel Optane persistent memory. 
We currently support up to eight socket wide VMs and up to eight socket hosts. I would say that the third requirement most important to customers in our roadmap is the continued support of all the enabling features of VMware. And in fact, we do support VMHA, vMotion, VM snapshots, and in-guest clustering with HANA virtual machines. Manuel, how does VMware engage and utilize its ecosystem partners to ensure their customer success for their digital transformation with SAP applications? SAP Digital Transformation Initiatives require an infrastructure as a service that is simple, resilient, scalable, and efficient. To achieve all of that, we work closely with our hardware ecosystem partners so that we can ensure that our joint solutions meet those critical attributes. Also, we maintain detailed support and capability roadmaps with our partners. With that, we can provide a consistent cadence of engineering, marketing, and accounting workshops so that we can ensure the delivery of best solutions and the unique capabilities that our customers will need to roll out their transformative SAP initiatives. Dominic, what is VMware doing in the Kubernetes modern app space around SAP? And we are very excited to say that we're fully aligned to SAP's Kubernetes container modern app strategy. It started by integrating SAP Gardener into VMware Cloud Foundation, which we actually completed this year. Now we're on to enabling SAP's new modernized apps portfolio so that we can be the platform of choice for SAP customers running SAP in the multi-cloud. And we've already seen substantial interest from our, uh, our joint customers. Thanks, Mark. Does VMware offer any SAP professional services to ensure that we're running our SAP applications using best practices? Yes, we do, definitely. SAP applications on VMware design requires a holistic approach across application and IT disciplines to ensure sustainable day zero, one, and two cloud operating models. And in close partnership with the experts at Symmetry Technologies, VMware's preferred SAP on VMware services partner. We offer a comprehensive portfolio of SAP design, migration, optimization, and automation services to ensure the success of SAP application deployments on vSphere and VMware Cloud Foundation. Thank you all so much for your time. It's been a real pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Hello everyone and welcome back. And I'd like to start off right away with our social media wall. So we have Casimir the cat back and he is just so cute. So he is playing with his 